Welcome everyone back to my third tutorial introduction to logistic regression and this will be my last introduction tutorial about vectorization and matrix multiplication. So in deep learning we usually deal with very large data sets. A uh, non-computationally optimal function can become a huge bottleneck in our algorithm and can result in model that takes ages to run. When we are writing machine learning functions we must be sure that our code is computationally efficient, so we always use vectorization. So in this tutorial, I write a few examples where we will compare vectorized and not vectorized functions. So to compare a vectorized and non-vectorized computation time, we will create a random numbers between 11 and 99. By the way, I'll use my last tutorial code as in, and before. So at first I'll import time so that we can compare the time difference. So I'll create for example x1 and I'll write a numpy function about random and rand integer and I'll create a random number between 11 and between 99 and of total size for now it will be for example 10 thousands and later we'll change this number to see to better see the differences between the computations so at first let's compare uh, dot implementation with for loops and numpy library this will be our for first comparison. So I'll write, uh, for example, at first I'll begin with tick. This will be time dot time. We'll uh, take a time before starting my function and dot will be, for example, zero. And let's write now a for function. So for i in range len x1, for example, here. And what we'll do is we always sum value to my our dot every for loop. So this will be x1 and i multiplied by x2 i. Sorry. Just like that. And now this is our just a for loop. Now we need to take a time after our for loop was finished. So another tiktok function and now just use a print so what we'll use here is computation time time will be equal to so to get some value in milliseconds we need to do like that and i will do it like this so if you're interested to this we can well let's start this and let's see what we get so we get 10 milliseconds well it's quite fast and now let's write another function and now let's do the same thing with numpy library so we don't need doc anymore and here we'll just write dot is equal to numpy dot and x1 x2 if you don't know what it does you can try to create a list for example with three or four uh, numbers inside and print your result what you receive so okay let's let's build it and let's see what we get so as you can see here we receive uh, our computation time with for loop and here we receive our computation time with numpy dot as you can see it's it does the job so fast that it do doesn't show any any time duration so we can try to increase our number quantities for for example it will be 50 thousands let's build this and it takes a little longer 53 num uh, milliseconds okay let's go to 100 thousands 
83 not much of increase that little more let's try okay as you can see it take took half a second half a second that's a lot so okay you see the vectorized version works much much faster okay now let's create another function so in numpy it call it outer function so at first i'll write a numpy numpy version of this function and then i'll write a for loop so this will be outer and here will be outer x1 x2 that it's finished as you can see <laughs> and now let's write a for loop it will be much longer much longer i can't do anything about that so it writes like this zeros we create a numpy zero series then we create sorry sorry again so we, then we create a len x1 and len x2 arrays remove this and then we go to create a for loop i in range for example len x1 then we create another loop loop for g in range len x2 this will be okay and then we we add this to our new outer array so it will be a and g a and g and then we just write it so a and multiply it by x2 by g just like that and i think that's it now we need to remove a little bit of this and it should be it let's build this and let's look how long it takes there is needed to do more computation than before this is the reason i lowered these values but as you can see it still takes quite long to compute and well there's no choice we should wait for it it takes too long i will make it lower still a little lower and i don't yeah you can see i made it much lower 1000 of values and you can see how long it took it here it took more than a second and here it was almost eight milliseconds yeah it's quite interesting comparison right now we can move to another example i'll comment this out here and okay i'll copy this full code here again it's quite kind of similar and now i'll write a new variable and this will be np round round random i mean random and here i'll create a three by length of x1 numpy array here will be my tiktok again and here i'll create another variable i'll call it g dot and this will be me numpy zeros and we dot shape of zero and here again we will use our for loop here and for i in range of we shape of zero and for g in range of length of our x1 for now and here will be g dot g dot and here will be no g plus 
plus V I N G multiplied sorry by X one G. Yeah, I think that's it for for our G dot function. This is kind of general dot multiplication and last but not least will be same function and I'll call it simply a dot and here will be my numpy dot numpy dot and inside it will write a w and x1 just like that Vectorize a general dot implementation. Okay, we have uh, thousands of values here. Let's build this. <laughs> As you can see, this was three milliseconds. Took three milliseconds. Let's build it again. Twenty-three milliseconds and almost one millisecond. And do it one more time. Half a second, almost half a second, and one millisecond. Significant difference, as you can see, but. So you understand why we use NumPy but not for loops. Here is, well, this is only a one line which replaces these, I don't know, many lines. And this will be my last example. And I forgot it before to implement, so I'll write here inside of this. And I'll copy again my numpy version of code and we'll use a simply multiply version of code so this will be x1 and this will be my x x2 simply and now i need to write a for loop implementation so i'll also copy this and we call it a multiplication and here we'll create a zeros again of the length zero length one and now we come back to our for loop for i in range length of x1 and here we don't need any more this line and we come back here and we we'll just write multiplication of one is equal to x1 i multiplied by x2 i yep that's it i'll decrease a little of this because it might take longer okay eight nine milliseconds we increase this this is 42 milliseconds in numpy version is zero and zero we can go to half a million yeah as you can see this is 300 milliseconds and here there is uh, one millisecond that's quite a lot so this is another example so in all these examples we have four examples of matrix multiplication as vectorized version and not vectorized version as you can see your choice what you want to use a for loop or you want to use a numpy version of these vectorized mathematical operations and I will repeat, as you may have noticed, that the vectorized implementation is much cleaner and more efficient. And for bigger vectors and matrices, the difference in running time becomes even bigger. So keep in mind that vectorization is very important in deep learning. It provides computational efficiency and clarity. So I hope that up to this point, we have a little warm-up that will help you in the future. Right now, we know what is sigmoid, what is sigmoid derivatives, array reshaping, rows normalization, what is broadcasting for the softmax, and vectorization. So, in next tutorial, we will start building gradient descent function, where everything will be more exciting and more interesting. So. Thank you all for watching. I hope this was a useful tutorial for you and keep watching my tutorials. Please subscribe my channel and like my video. Thank you again.
and goodbye. See you next time.